So as we've heard, we're going to be learning on the subject of how to be led by the Spirit. How to be led by the Spirit. We call it the, we call it the true north. The true north. Um, last month, we talked about the move of the Spirit. How many of us were here last month? Yeah, last month was a beautiful experience. God took us deeper in a journey um, of the Spirit. We got to learn about the person of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Some consider him a force. Some consider him a wind. So that, um, that teaching from last month, you know, gave us, is, is going to give us like the background of what we're about to learn today. We have to you know, lay a foundation for the things we'll be learning today. You know, Bible says that um, when Jesus was talking, it says there are two people. It says that people, there are some people who listen to the word of God and then they do it. It said such people can be, you know, can be considered as a man that built his house on the rock. He said there are, there's another person also building. He said they built but they built on sand. Everyone is building, let me tell you. As a believer, you are constantly building. As you are hearing God's word, what you do with it determines the kind of foundation you are laying for your life. And Bible says rain came, storm came, the wind came. The same circumstance that affected the house that was built on a rock was also the same circumstance that affected the house that was built on a sand. And Bible says the one built on a rock stood. So if you're going to stand the test of time, the challenges of time, it's going to be dependent on what the foundation of your Christian faith is built on. Built on. So are you built on faith? Is your, is, your, is your belief system, your conviction, is it built on, you know, solid foundation of God's word? Or is just, you know, a little here, a little there. There is no deep, there, there, there's no depth in God that can make you stand even in the days of adversity. Glory to God. I believe strongly God has a word for us today and I want our hearts to be open. We have been praying for you and we know that the word of the Lord will come in your direction in the name of Jesus. It is important we understand who the Holy Spirit is so that we can understand how he leads us. So if you were not here last month and you still want to have an idea of what we taught last month, you can go to our YouTube channel, The Lighthouse Arizona, and then you will find the message there. We're going to start from where my husband stopped, Romans 8 verse 14. Romans 8 verse 14. Romans 8 verse 14. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. It says, these are the sons of God. That means one of the proofs of sonship in God is the ability to be led by the Spirit. Everyone is being led by something. An unbeliever is being led by demon. He does not know. Bible says, Ephesians chapter 2 about how the people of the sons of disobedience are controlled by the prince of the power of the air. They don't know. Everyone is under the influence of a spirit. It's either you're under the influence of the spirit of God or you are under the influence of demonic spirit. But Bible says for as many as are led by the spirit of God. As many as are under the influence of the spirit of God. He says these ones are the sons of God. So one of the proofs of our sonship in God is the ability to be led by the Spirit. Is the ability to, led, to be led by the Spirit. Let us see Psalms 32. Psalms 32 verse 8 to 9. Psalms 32 verse 8 to 9. We'll read the New King James Version and then we'll read the Passion Translation. Psalms 32 verse 8 to 9. This was God speaking through the psalmist. He says, I will instruct and teach you in the way you should go. He says, I will instruct and teach you in the way you should go. There is a way we ought to go. There is a path of destiny that has been mapped out for each and every one of us. God says he will instruct us. You know, you know in the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, we're still going to come back here. Bible says, trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. He says, in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. The com most convenient thing for us as humans is leaning on our own understanding. We, we like to boast in our ability, in our brains, the things we know, the knowledge we've acquired from school, the books we have read, you know, the way culture has raised us. We, we like to boast in such a thing. But Bible says that it is God that will teach us. He will instruct us in the way we ought to go. There is a way we should go. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man. It is the end of destruction. So if this is the way I ought to go, if I don't receive the instruction of God to go in this direction, my brain can tell me turn right when God is saying move forward. My brain can tell me turn left. 
And you, you just think, you know, just because, you know, you graduated from college, you have a, a great certificate, you know, you're from a good family. Everyone know that you have brains. You, you get what I'm saying? But Bible says, I will instruct you. God was saying, he will instruct us. He will teach us in the way that we should go. There is a way we ought to go. There is a path God has laid out for our destiny. God wants to reveal his will to us. He says, I will guide you with my eye. We need to learn how to trust the Lord. Because if you're going to be led by the Spirit, you have to trust that God has the best interest at heart for you. Why should I submit to the leading of the Spirit? Because the Holy Ghost knows what I don't know. The Holy Ghost has been in the future. I've not been there. So I'd better listen to him and follow his instructions, his teachings and his guidance. He says, I will teach you in the way you should go. There is a way everyone ought to go. I remember I shared a story on my social media platform yesterday. I was rounding up internship. So I'm a physical therapist by training. And back in Nigeria where I was trained, once you finish, um, um, once you spend like five years in college, you get to do a year internship in a teaching hospital. And before the, after that, you go and serve the government. We call it NYSC in Nigeria, National Youth Service Corp. So there's a compulsory, um, there's a compulsory service you have to give to the government before you can be licensed to practice as a physical therapist. So I had finished, I was about to round up the internship, which was like few days to the end of the internship. And um, I had been posted to another state for the government uh, service. So I was ready. My friends and I, we were so excited. Some of us were even posted to almost the same location. We were excited to continue life. And then a few days to the end of my internship, I started having this unrest in my spirit. I knew something was wrong, but I did not know what it was. I started having this unrest. I, started having, I just knew something was wrong. There's something that I was supposed to pick that I did not get. So you know what I did? I got my pastor's teaching series on hearing God. That I needed to put the puzzle together. What, why, why was there such an unrest in my spirit? And like three days to the end of the internship, I mean, if, if I had not discerned correctly what God was trying to tell me, I would have made physically in the physical realm, I would have made progress in the spirit, but I would have experienced a delay in destiny. Because the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man. It says the end thereof is destruction. That moment was a kairos moment. The Holy Spirit said it was not time. After I had listened to the messages over and over, and then I just had this knowing within me that it was not yet time to go. It was not yet. Even though I was rounding up internship, my, my stay in that city was not over. The plans of God for me in that city was not over. So it was like a withdrawal that don't go, don't follow, don't follow the multitude. Don't do what everyone is doing. Stay back. And then I had another knowing that I should go on a 40-day fasting and prayer. And then I started. And in that season, that was when the Holy Spirit started telling me about the plans of God for me in ministry. His hand upon my life, the specific assignment he has called me to do, the transitions that will happen in the nearest few years of my life. Now, if I had gone for the youth service, I would not have known all those things. And that season of my life became the foundation for the things I do today and who I am today. God wants to instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I, I remember when I stayed back, when, when I wanted to stay back, one of my friends came to me. He's also a physical therapist. He said, Shea, what will you be doing here? Everyone is going, everyone, is continue, everyone wants to continue with life. Why, what do you want to do? Because physically, it doesn't make any sense. My job was done in choir state. My internship program was done. It means I will have no accommodation. I would have to trust God for my feeding. Everything was like on a standstill. But it was a birthing season for me in destiny. So if I had gone ahead, people would have thought, oh, she's making progress, you know, she's not a licensed physical therapist, not knowing that I would have chosen physical therapy over, physical therapy over ministry. I would have chosen my own plan over God's plan, over God's purpose for my life. God wants to instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. How did I know I was supposed to marry my husband? Being a, a, a woman in ministry makes you kind of attractive to a lot of people. Because of that, you will receive a lot of advances. I had a lot of advances. Men of God, ministers of God, pioneers of churches. How did I know that someone that, that, that has not pioneered anything in his life? The only thing he has pioneered is himself. <laughs> Why did I leave the other options and then go for him? If not, there probably would not have been a lighthouse today. Because there's a program in God's destiny that we are supposed to do together. Glory to God. Glory to God. So God wants to instruct us. 
and teach us in the way we should go. So how does God be? I want you to know that your advancement as a believer, it depends on your ability to be led by the Spirit. Your advancement as a believer, it depends on your ability to be led by the Spirit. It is, see, being led by the Spirit means the Holy Spirit is always a step ahead. It means that you are taking the posture of a follower. It is better, let me tell you, it is better to be late in destiny than to run ahead of God. It is better that I would rather be late. Everyone is arriving early. People are saying, why are you still at this stage? Why are you still at this? I would rather arrive late than run ahead of God. Glory to God. There is no possibility for meaningful progress outside the voice of God. There is no possibility for meaningful progress outside the voice of God. I remember also in 20, towards the end of 2019 to 2020, I was, I used to prepare towards the, you know, my birthday every year and towards the end of the year. I just want to know the plans of God for me the following year. And then I set apart some, you know, some time to, you know, seek the face of God in fasting and prayer. God, what's your plan for this coming year? And then this knowing too came that I should open a physical therapy clinic. I mean, <laughs> you just left school like some few years ago. A physical therapy clinic in Lagos. I mean, I know. Most of us here have probably not ever been to Nigeria. It's capital intensive. To even get the location alone, you will need a lot of money. And the Holy Spirit told me how to go about it. Who to meet? Till today, it's almost three years the physical therapy clinic has been running. We've not paid a cup or a dollar in rent. Because the Lord led us to someone who like owned a hospital, a building. And then they gave us a part of the building for us to, you know, to, to operate the clinic in, we did not have to pay a couple. The leading of the spirit, it would determine your advancement in life. It will save you from disaster. It will, see, there is a path of destiny God has mapped out for each and every one of us. It takes the leading of the spirit for us to understand. Glory to God. And one of the roles the Holy Spirit plays in our lives is to lead us into a victorious life that glorifies Jesus. One of the roles the Holy Spirit plays in our life is not just for us to speak in tongues. There is more to the Holy Ghost than speaking in tongues. He wants to lead you into a victorious life that glorifies God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After salvation, after salvation, the greatest skill, or let me say the greatest art we must develop is the art of being led by the Spirit. You can never outgrow this teaching, no matter how anointed you are. It's a topic you must constantly go back to over and over, over and over. People have said God said before that God did not say. It takes a consistent pattern of hearing God before you arrive at a conclusion like God said. It takes a consistent pattern. There has to be a track record of consistent leading in your life before you arrive at a conclusion like God said I should relocate. God said I should marry this person. God said this is the job I should take. God said this is the friend I should have. It takes a consistent pattern. So, so, so if you feel you already know it, you can also grow in alignment. You can grow in alignment. You may already understand how to discern the voice of God, how the Lord leads. You can grow in alignment, in obedience. Glory to God. Glory to God. Because your success in life depends on how led you, are. you are being led by the Spirit. And your spiritual senses... Eh? They can get mature. You, you exercise your spiritual senses to maturity by the reason of use. That means the more I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, the more I have the capacity to discern him more and more. It's like a child that is born and like a baby. As you feed the child, as the child grows, my, my daughter cannot talk, but she understands some advances we make. You know, sometimes say, go and meet daddy. She will just follow the direction of their hand. The next time you, you said the same thing, she understands because... They, you, you said it over and over. So she has, she's mastering those, you know, those gestures, those gesticulations we make. You know, go and, go and meet daddy. If she wants to eat, I mean, like, you can become better. That's what I'm trying to say. Our spiritual senses, they are, they are exercised to maturity by the reason of use. Every day, God wants to lead you. It's not, see, some people wait today about to make an important decision like who to marry. Before they learn how to be led by the Spirit. They know it's important. They know that that decision will affect the rest of their destiny. So they want to. That's why you see some people, they will quickly run to the prophet. They have a prophet they call in the days of trouble. <laughs> they have like 10 names. 
Oh, Calvin has asked me out. Uh, give me names. Who are the girls you have been asking out? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so they write out a list of names. Say, then, then they go and meet the prophet. Who should I marry? God did in this New Testament, God has not designed us to be led by prophets. He says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. As many. In this New Testament, God has not designed us to be led by prophets. You see, prophets can confirm what God has already told you. But God did not design any prophet to take the place of the Holy Ghost. God did not design any prophet to take the place of the Holy Ghost. So when you come to me seeking for divine leading, I will ask you what the Holy Ghost has told you first. Because it is not my responsibility to tell you the job to take, the people to say no to, the person to marry. It is the work of the Holy Ghost. It is that responsibility has been given to the Holy Spirit. And last, last month we examined that the Holy Spirit is a gift to as many people that believe. He's available to all. I don't have a special Holy Ghost. God did not brand the Holy Spirit. I say, you know, this set of people, give them a different kind of the Holy Ghost. The type that they can quickly hear. The type they can have access to. No, every believer, it is the same Holy Spirit. So if you are born of the Spirit, you are full of the Spirit, you have capacity to be led by the Spirit. Glory to God. The leading of the Spirit will bring us into prosperity. Can we see Genesis 26? Genesis 26. Why do I need to be led by the Spirit? It will bring me into prosperity. It will save me from disaster. It will bring me into the fullness of God's plan and purpose for my life. Genesis 26. We're going to read from verse 1 to 3 and then from verse 12 to 14. Genesis 26. Please take note. From verse 1 to 3 and from verse 12 to 14. The Bible says there was a famine in the land. I want us to see this together. Genesis 26 from verse 1, it says, There was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. Verse 2 says, Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Let me tell you a backstory. Abraham, his father, during the days of Abraham, there was also another famine that drove Abraham to Egypt. When Abraham went to Egypt, he actually prospered more. So Isaac probably had heard the story of how his father relocated in times of famine and said, see, once this kind of a thing happened in our community, the nearest place we go to is Egypt. Because back then, Egypt was the seat of civilization. It's like you relocating from Africa to the United States. Even if you don't have a college degree, you still get a good job here. It might be hard where you are coming from, but you know it's easy. So people look for... You know, where are, where's the greener pastures? Let's go there, let's go there. And that was what was about to happen to Egypt. He wanted to make the same decision his father took. When he found himself in the same case scenario, but Bible says the Lord appeared to him. The Lord, he had an encounter. The Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Everyone may think their prosperity is there, but I have a different plan for you. He says, live in the land of which I shall tell you. You're planning to relocate because you feel better jobs are in, probably in D.C. Better jobs are in, you know, in, um, Washington, D.C. Yeah, same thing. Better do, do jobs are in Chicago. You know, Arizona is just, it's, it's, the job system is as dry as the weather. And then you're constantly looking for greener pastures. God said, do not go down to Egypt. God can instruct you in the area of relocation. He says, live in the land of which I shall tell you. Verse 3. Verse 3, he says, dwell in this land, this same place where there is famine. He says, and I will be with you. That means what is responsible for prosperity is not the, is not the economic atmosphere. It is the presence of God. Because the Bible says, even in Joseph, for Joseph, when he was in prison, he, he, he was fruitful. He prospered because God was with him. He says, dwell in this land, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. He says, for to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I saw to your Abraham, your father. Now, let us go to verse 12 to 14. Verse 12 to 14. It says, Bible says, then Isaac, then Isaac sowed in that same land where there was famine. See, when the Lord leads you, may you will always obey. May you never have the willpower to disobey God. Because it does not, see... Everything will amount to nothing if the Holy Spirit leads you and you still disobey. 
There is no point in being led if I will not follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Bible says, then Isaac sowed in that same land. Sowing means, did not mean that he gave someone money. He planted. There was farming, but he planted in that land. And Bible says, he, and he reaped in that same year where everyone was screaming farming. He reaped a hundredfold. A hundredfold means that if he sowed one seed, he got times hundred. If he sowed a hundred seed, he got hundred times hundred. He was in a hundredfold. He did not get what he sowed. He got a hundredfold of what he sowed. Glory to God. And Bible says, and the Lord blessed him. Let us see verse 13. Bible says, the man, that man the Lord led, that man that obeyed, that man that did not go. He says, the man began to prosper. He continued prospering until he became very prosperous. He grew in prosperity. He grew in prosperity. Let me tell you, greener pastures are not everywhere. They are only where the Lord makes you lie down. David said, or the, the writer of Psalm 23, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. He says, I shall not want. He says, because he makes me lie down in green pastures. That is where I don't want. It is God that knows where the green pasture is. It is not your certificate. Oh. Apply to all the companies. If the Lord does not lead you to where the green pasture is, you will you keep suffering. He says, I shall not want because he makes me lie down. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. God is the commander of my destiny. He's the commander of my destiny. He's the one taking the lead I am just following. Glory to God. And Bible says he grew in post. He, 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 he began to prosper. He continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. If you follow Jesus, let me tell you, you will lack nothing good. He will, you will lack nothing good. He will lead you into the path of, he will lead you in the path of prosperity. Glory to God. The leading of the spirit, why do I need to be led by the spirit? Because it will also save you from disaster. The Lord wants to lead you into his perfect way for your life. But on that pathway, the enemy can come and throw things in your way. But it is the Lord that will tell you, dodge, kneel, so that a bullet can go across your head. If the guy did not obey the leading of the spirit, he would have died. And some Christians will come and say, ah, how can, how did God allow someone like that to die? Let me tell you, no believer dies just anyhow without God not leading them first. God is not a bad father. God is not a bad father. He says, I will instruct you in the way you should go. There is no such thing as untimely death in the program of God. It's either you are done with your purpose or the Lord led you who did not obey. Because Jesus lived that three and a half years. For some people like us would have thought he died untimely. But he was done with his assignment. So it was not an untimely death. It was a purposeful death. So if someone dies early, it's either they are done with the assignment or there was a desire and God decided to you know, save them from me and told them ahead of time, but they did not hear. So if that man that was praying on the mountain did not listen to the Holy Spirit, kneel, he probably would have died. And some believers would come. How can God kill such a brother? He was so prayerful. He was so giving to the things of the Spirit. How can God be unfair? God was not unfair. You probably didn't, you were not there when God led him and he did not, he did not listen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, now, let me go into the ways by which God leads us. The way, how does the Holy Spirit lead us? How does the Holy Spirit lead us? I want you to settle this in your mind. God speaks. Say after me, God speaks. Settle it. There are a plethora of ways by which God leads us. Now, when I say God speaks, it, it does not necessarily mean through an audible voice. Because sometimes where a lot of us miss the leading of the Spirit is that we are waiting for an audible voice. My son, 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 son. Rise, 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 rise. E, that's what, how some people think God sounds like. No. Don't box God. There are plethora, there's a plethora of ways by which God speaks. Don't box God. And we're going to look into it today. How does God speak? Number one, by the inward witness. The Lord speaks to us by the inward witness. The Lord speaks to us by the inward witness. Let us see Genesis 1 verse 20. And I'm going to explain that now shortly. 
Genesis 1 verse 26. Let us see that. Genesis 1 verse 26. Genesis 1 verse 26. I want you to look at this together. Let us see this together. The Bible says, then God said, let us. If you've ever doubted the subject of Trinity, this is a proof. God did not go ahead to make man, but he said, let us. And he was not talking to himself. He was not talking to um, created beings. He was talking to the deity, the other parts of deity. He was talking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He says, let us make man. He says, in our, not, not mine. That means there is, there is um, equity in each trinity. How do, how do I say that? Like, the three, they are three, but they agree as one. They are, yeah, there is unity in trinity. He says, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Now, let us stop there. Prior to this time, God had created many things. Do you know how he created them? He says, let there be light. And Bible says, and there was light. Let there be firmament. Let there be this. Let there be that. But when God get, got to man, he did not say, let there be man. He said, let us make man. Man was made. You were not just created. Ma see, see you, should, you should celebrate God. That you are not just another piece of creation. He says, let us make man. There was a making. Excuse me. And it was not an ordinary making. He says, in our image. Kai. In our image. Just like God looks. He says, in our likeness. In similitude of function. In similitude of, re there is a re resemblance. In our image. Just like we are. And the question is, how does God look like? Or what does God look like? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, John 4, verse 24. John 4, verse 24. God commanded all creation, but when he got to man, he says, let us make man. John 4, 24. John 4, 24. We'll see something shortly. The Bible says, God is spirit. God is spirit. So when God said, let us make man in our image, what he made was a spirit. A spirit being just like himself. See, you are not just your ordinary body, oh. You are not your ordinary body. You are primarily a spirit being. You have a soul and you live in a body. If all you pay attention is your physical body, you've missed a huge part of, of yourself. You've not even discovered who you are. Because God is a spirit. So when he was saying, let us make man. Oh, we resemble us in image. And we have the same similitude of function. The Bible says he made spirits. He did not just make body. He was in chapter 2, Bible says, and God formed the human body. So he first made man as a spirit. In, if you now see Genesis chapter 2, Bible says, and God formed man from the dust of the earth. He, he, he formed the dust. He formed our body with, from the dust. But he had first made man in Genesis chapter 1. Let us see 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. This is um, a, teaching, a teaching ministry. So, you will understand God's word. You know, I, I said something about foundation initially. It's better your foundation is solid. So that when people, you know, question your belief, your conviction, you can defend the faith. Because you have a strong conviction in what you believe in. You are not just being tossed to and fro. And then they bring a wind of doctrine today, you go with the wind. They bring another tomorrow, you go with the wind. You, know, you are not that kind of a believer. You are the believer that is rooted in God. You are planted. There is a solid conviction for your belief. Glory to God. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Now see this with me. It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Now he puts a semicolon to explain what he has just been saying. He says, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you are not just your body. You are primarily a spirit. And God is saying that he wants to sanctify you completely. He wants your spirit to be sanctified, your soul to be sanctified, and your body to be sanctified. There is a total transformation God wants. But primarily, this is the order of importance. It is first your spirit, your soul, and your body. How do I know that your spirit is more important than your body? It's by the law of first mention. Because in this scripture, spirit was mentioned before body. So if I'm going to pay attention to my life, I have to first pay attention to my, my spirit, my spirit man. The real me, it's on the inside. Glory to God. 
Because if we wake up every morning and we just shower, we put on makeup, a very nice wig, comb your hair, you are just paying attention to your body. The real you may be suffering on the inside. How do you feel your, feed your spirit man? With the word of God. You, just the way you take a shower in your physical. Bible says there is a, 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 a regeneration. There, yeah, by the washing of the water by the word. There's, there's a cleansing your spirit man goes, goes through. By the washing of water by the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it says, may your whole spirit, soul, and body. So we've established that God is a spirit. And we've also established that we also are spirit beings. So when God wants to speak to you, primarily he speaks to your spirit. He witnesses to your spirit. That is what we mean by the inward witness. The inward witness. And let me tell you something. Let us go back to that Genesis 126. Genesis 126. Glory to God. Say after me, my spirit carries God's DNA. My spirit carries God's DNA. You have the capacity to be led by the spirit. You were born with it. Because the Bible says your spirit was made in the image of God and the likeness of God. Let me tell you, when Adam sinned, he lost that, that identity, that capacity. He lost it to sin. But when we, became, when we become born again, our spirit man is recreated. There is a regeneration that goes, that takes place. By the work of the Holy Spirit, we are recreated. Our spirit now comes alive. We are no longer spiritually dead. We are now spiritually alive in Christ Jesus. So, Bible says, then God said, let us make man in our image. Do you know what that means? When God was making man, it was a collaborative effort. He did not do it alone. Let us, just like having conversation with Yannick, let us go to your house. There has to be an agreement between both of us before we decide to go in your house. So, so anything God, we want to do in life or God wants to lead us, it's a collaborative effort. He witnesses to your spirit. The Holy Spirit, because he's a spirit, he witnesses to your spirit, not your body, not your mind. He witnesses. He says, let us. Let us. You will just have this knowing. Sometimes, some people call it a perception. Some people call it a knowing. Some people call it um, a check in the spirit. and Like an intuition. You just know. I just, how did I know that it was my house? I just know. I knew. I told you like my experience at the, towards the end of, end of my internship. I just had this knowing. It was not like I heard a, an audible voice. There was a knowing in my spirit because I'm a spirit being. I'm a child of God. I'm God's offspring. I have his DNA. I know when my, see, if you put a thousand people in this room and you ask my father, eh, everyone should start talking. Cover my eyes. Let me not see him. The moment he talks, I will recognize him. All my life I've known him. I mean, I carry his DNA by nature. Effortlessly I look like him. So also, when God speaks, because your spirit has the image and the likeness of God, he will understand. Hearing God is not spooky. Hearing God is not difficult. God wired you to be able to understand him. So the Holy Spirit witnesses to your spirit that part of you that is made in the image and the likeness of God. We're still going to get there because some of us are not able to pick those signals because we've not trained our spirit. We have not been taught in the things of the spirit. We don't understand that this is what it looks like. So sometimes God has led us before just say, ah, you were going out in the morning. You did not check the weather forecast. You didn't know that it would rain. But something was telling me that I should Take my umbrella because I don't have a car. And something was telling you. That something was telling me is not something. It is someone. Because it's the Holy Spirit witnessing to your spirit about what will happen in the future. That you are not aware of. He has been in the future. You've not been there. So you're a child of God. God loves you. He has your best interest at heart. He will not just watch you head on the path of destruction and say nothing. God is not that kind of a father. Glory to God. So when God wants to lead you, he witnesses to your spirit, not your head. Get it right. Not your head, not your body, not your mind. Let us see Proverbs 20 verse 27. Proverbs 20 verse 27. Proverbs 20 verse 27. 
He says, the spirit of a man. Did you see that? That means man has a spirit. Man, he says, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. Searching all the inner depths of his heart. So when God wants to give me an instruction, all he needs to do is to light up my spirit. There will be a perception. I will just know this is the guy. I will just know this is the job. I will just know I'm not supposed to head that way. Are you with? There is a, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. What do you need a lamp for? If we turn off the light in this place, everywhere goes dark, right? If you need light, what do you need? You turn on the switch. So if there is darkness and God wants to give you an instruction, all he needs to do is to light up your spirit. That lighting of your spirit is what we call the inward witness. A knowing, a perception, an impression. When Moses was about to, you know, fulfill his destiny, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 7 that he came into his heart to visit his brethren. How did he know that he was the deliverer? Nobody told him. But the Bible says he came into his heart. He just had the knowing that even though I, am, I was adopted by the daughter of Pharaoh, I am not supposed to be the prince of Egypt. I am the deliverer of Israel. He knew. He came into his heart. It was like an impression. See, purpose and your calling, your whatever you call it, it is not hard to discover. People have made it so spooky. How do I discover God's purpose for my life? How do I discover? It's not spooky. Because you have a father that wants to lead you in the way you should go. You just need to be taught how to hear him, how to discern. God is not trying to hide himself from you. He's not, God is not that kind of a father. He doesn't play hide and seek with our destinies. Glory to God. So, see, this is one of the most, the inward witness is one of the most trusted way of the leading of the spirit. You will just have a knowing. Let us see Acts 27. Acts 27. Hmm. Acts 27, verse 10. Acts 27, verse 10. Let me tell you why it is one of the safest ways by which God leads us. Acts 27, verse 10. This was Apostle Paul. They were going on a voyage. It's like you um, riding or on Titanic. And they tell you, this ship can never sink. There was also a ship like that called, uh, no, I've forgotten the name of the ship. It was, was a, because the Bible says the, the sailor of the ship, the captain of the ship said, no, this kind of ship can never sink. But Apostle Paul said, man, he was talking to professionals. This guy was not a sailor. He could not, he could not drive, he doesn't know how to drive a ship. But he had, <laughs> No bread also. He says, man, I perceive. I just have this impression in my heart that this voyage, we end, with, we end with disaster and much loss. Not only of the cargo and ship, but also of our lives. Did you see that? He said, I perceive that if I go on this journey, there's an accident on the way. It can lead to the loss of, your, loss of a limb. I perceive. He did not say, the Lord appeared to me. He did not say I heard an audible voice. He did not say an angel stood by me. He said, I perceive. That is the inward witness. The Lord witnessed to the spirit of Apostle Paul that this voyage, this journey they're about to start, it will end with disaster. Let me tell you, as a believer, you can know disaster before it happens. The Lord can prepare you before the days of evil. The Bible says a righteous man foreseeth evil and then he hides himself. Your Holy Spirit is your ability, is your foresight. Holy Spirit is your, force, is your benefit of foresight. Because he has been into the future. He can tell you there is, a, there is an intended evil ahead. Hide yourself. Hide yourself. There is an investment you are about to make. And the Holy Spirit has seen that in the next six months it will crash. You say hide your money. He, you can perceive disaster before it happens. Glory to God. Do you know why your spirit is the safest way by which God speaks? It's because when you got born again, Bible says that the Lord sealed our spirit with the Holy Spirit of promise. There is a seal on your life. There is a seal on your spirit that the devil, see the devil cannot penetrate your spirit. The devil cannot penetrate your spirit. The devil can penetrate your soul. That's why sometimes you can have terrible dreams, nightmares. Some of you, you, you wait until God leads you through a dream before you, before you move. God does not only lead through dreams. So the devil can also lead through dreams. So all those dreams that you've magnified. Uh, this is where God talks to me. Devil too can talk to you through your dream. Because dream is in the realm of the soul. But the, your spirit.
spirit man has been sealed. It is only God that has access to your spirit. That is why it is the safest way by which God talks to you. The devil also knows scripture. Do you know he told Jesus? Because the word of God is one of the ways that the, the Lord speaks to us. Do you know the devil can quote scripture? So you can be hearing a scripture. <laughs> I'll get to it. But your spirit, that inward weakness, that knowing, that impression in your heart. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let us see Acts 15 verse 28. Let me tell you how the inward witness works. Acts 15 verse 28. So in this particular chapter, there was like a confusion about what the Jews should be doing or what the Gentiles should be doing. Because the Jews, as at that time, the salvation was only being preached to Jews. Now the Gentiles too were being saved and, you know, commotion arose in the church. Like, what are they supposed to do? Are they supposed to, you know, engage in circumcision just like the Jews? And then they don't know what to do. But God spoke through James, one of the pillars of the church. And then they wrote a letter to the church in Antioch that this is what they are supposed to do. Now see what they wrote. They said, for it seemed good <laughs> to the Holy Spirit and to us. That is how God witnesses. It will seem good to the Holy Spirit. If it is a good decision, every time you pray about it, you will have peace about it. If it is a bad decision, thank you, darling. Come and preach with mommy. If it is a bad decision, if it is a bad decision, you will, see, you will receive like an alarm in your spirit. It's like an alarm in your spirit that will go off. When you get to a traffic light, once you see red, what do you do? Exactly. That is how it works. When the Lord is witnessing to your spirit that this thing is bad, it will, you see, there will be like an unrest. It was just as though when I wanted to, you know, go for my um, government service. There was this unrest. More like you're about to make decision. Uh, you're about to make a forward, move, forward movement in the physical. But in the realm of the spirit, it was a wrong decision. So this withdrawal within my spirit. You will just know that something is not right about this thing. You will just know. Uh, there is a knowing within you. Let me share an experience with you. A particular minister in Nigeria, a woman minister, I mentioned her name. Some people might know her. So she was invited to come teach or preach in another state. She was pregnant with her child. I don't know whether it was the first child or the second child. So she was lodged in this hotel in Abuja, Nigeria. And she lives in Lagos. So she lodged in a hotel. She had the first session, first day. It went very well. She said the second day she woke up in the morning. She just had this, it was like an alarm going off, going off in her spirit. Something was not right. She did not know what it was. So she started praying. Manaka. She said she prayed so much. The, the, like that knowing got, got stronger. That unrest got stronger. She was like, God, what is going on? She did not hear any audible voice. God did not lead her through the scripture. There was just an unrest. She said she kept praying, praying. When she prayed and that body was not lifted, you know what she did? She just knew that, let me leave this hotel. And as soon as she left, a bomb went off in the hotel. She would have died. The pregnancy, the child she was crying would have died. You see, this knowing, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. If it is not good to the Holy Spirit, it will not seem good to you. And let me tell you, the leading of the Spirit sometimes is always contrary to your logic. When my husband asked me out, we're still talking about a few, few days ago. When my husband asked me out, I had 1,001 reasons for him in the physical. To say it will, I told him it will never work. I told him, withdraw your proposal. It will never work. Because I was giving him, you are doing a PhD. You are doing this. You are doing that. It's all, I'm telling you because I was like, do I have to wait till you finish PhD before we get married? I don't want to wait that long. You know? Like, <laughs> I mean, so I, I can begin to list those reasons. In the physical, it did not make any sense. Because everyone wants to live a soft life. You're still a student. Are you going to take care of a wife? Not to talk of a child. But here we are. Sophia is joined. Sophia has joined us. Glory to God. And we've not died. <laughs> so I had every reason to say no in the physical. But he just said, pray about it. He said, pray about it. So I took you to go in prayer. See, and the Holy Spirit dropped a word in my spirit, James 1.17. I became, at first I became confused. Like, no, because my logic was going against the leading of the spirit. My logic was saying, Look at this, look at this, look at that. But the Holy Spirit said, every good and perfect gift comes from God. I became confused so much that I became sick. I had to call my spiritual mother. I said, why is, the, why is God playing with my destiny? Why would God say, this is the guy, but then these are the reasons in the physical why he should not be the guy? 
She said, just keep praying. One thing about the leading of the spirit, if it is good, the more you pray about it, the more peace you will have. But every time you pray about it and you lose your peace, it means it is not good to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. It, just like it is seemed good to the Holy Spirit, your spirit man will have peace about it. But the moment you lose your peace, like that woman, she did not know what it was. It was a bomb that was about to go off. Prayer did not take away that unrest. Prayer did not take away that check in our spirit. The more you pray about it, you just know something is wrong about this decision. Prayer will never take it away. Glory to God. Glory to God. The second way by which God leads, I'm, 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 I want to rush now so that we can finish before time. The second way by which God leads us is his word. It is word. God's word is the har- God's word is the arrowhead of divine leading. God's word is the arrowhead of divine leading. It is God's first voice to you above any other. Sometimes people complain that they don't know how God sounds like. God sounds like his word. If you want to train your human spirit to descend the leading of the spirit correctly, start with your Bible. God sounds like his word. Because any impression, any perception, any knowing that is at variance with the word of God is not from God. I'll repeat, any impression, any perception you have, any knowing, any check in your spirit that is at variance with the word of God, it is not from God. That means God will never lead you contrary to his word. Bible says the word and the spirit, they are one. God, see, he says, let us make man. There was agreement in Trinity. There's agreement in Trinity. The Holy Spirit will never give you an instruction that is against the word of God. Even Jesus told his disciples, he says, when the spirit come, comes, it, it will take of what is of me and then he will show it to you. They don't say, ah, Holy Spirit does not say, sin. forget that thing Jesus told you. Let me give you the written. There's nothing like that in Trinity. There's agreement, unity. Even though they are three, but they agree as one. Glory to God. So the Holy Spirit will never lead you in variance with God's word. So I want to encourage you as a believer, take the word of God seriously. Take the word of God seriously. Actually, half of the guidance you will need in your life has already been captured in the word of God. There are some things that you don't need to hear God about. For example, you don't need to ask God whether to marry a non-believer. It is already captured in the word of God. Do not be unequally yoked. There is no need to pray about it. See, don't even take it to the prophet. <laughs> I had a lady reached out to me. She was down, heartbroken, actually. She had dated this guy for almost several years, maybe eight years. And then the mother insisted that she must not marry him. They were ready to get married. She had finished school. They, they, were, they, had, they had planned their future together. And the mother said, no way. I said, why, why, why? Because the prophet said, he's not the one. So she became so, you know what she did? So she said, mommy, I have other people asking me out. Oh. Um, so let's say, what's your second name? Yannick. Hicks, right? Yannick Hicks. So I said, oh, mommy, there's other people asking me out. The mom, the mom was like, are there other people in your life? Let's pray about it. So you know what she did? She put Yannick as the first name. Hicks as the second. Put the guy's third name as the third. <laughs> then, then gave it to the mother. You've been praying about it from the prophet. Yeah, take it to the prophet. So the prophet ruled out the guy's first name. And they said, this second one, this second one, this is the one, it's the one, is the one. <laughs> do you get it? Do you, do you get what I just said? The analogy I just said. <laughs> he said, that first name. And the girl was like, mommy, it's the same guy. The girl was like, no. It can't be. You cannot marry him. They had to break up the relationship. Well, eight years relationship. Just because the prophet said he's not the one. And this guy is a pastor. He knew that God led, her to, God led him to the girl. The girl too, she's a good Christian. She knew that God led him. But the woman insisted. The mother insisted, no. The mother wants her to marry like a medical doctor. You know, someone that can take care of you. Not that kind of logic that, you know, is a pastor. How much does a pastor earn? Okay. Yeah, that's the woman's reason. But she, she hid it under the cloud of prophet said. You know, there's a way you honor men, servants of God. Yannick, number one. Hicks, number two. It is Hicks. Hicks, Hicks is the guy. <laughs> Not knowing that he's the same person. Glory to God. So there are some leadings that are already captured in the word of God. You don't need to ask God, should I marry this guy? He's an unbeliever. She, he's an unbeliever. And you're still praying about it. See, 
Take it. Flee. You are supposed to flee. Don't wait to pray about it. It has already been captured in the word of God. How did I start writing books? By the grace of God, I've written seven books. How did I start writing? I had desired for a long time to write. But that, it was like a latent ability that was on my inside. Then a year, in 2020, this instruction started coming. Isaiah 29, verse um, 11 or 17. It says, verse 18, it says, from verse 17. He says, in that day, Lebanon shall be called a fruitful field. And the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. He said, in that day, the deaf will hear the words of the book. The deaf will hear the words of the book. Now, it's not talking about physical deafness. It's talking about spiritual Oh, people are not enlightened spiritually. God said he's going to enlighten people through the books. He says, and the eyes of the blind will see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The Lord told me, take two things seriously. The writing of books and the recording of videos. That was what led to me. Sometimes when I push out content, people think, I uh, just want to be a digital creator. No, it came from an instruction. God said, there are people you will, you will, you will minister to through your writings. There are those you will minister to through your speaking. I start taking the two seriously. God can lead you through his word. He led me to, to marry my husband through the word. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Every good and perfect gift. Even though my logic was saying, hey, this is a bad gift. This is a terrible gift. This is a gift that will make you wait. This is a gift that does not have money. This is, see, the logic sometimes will always be at variance with the leading of the spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. The more you immerse yourself in the word, the more you give your mind healthy scriptural tools, to interpret the speakings and the light of God. Now, when God witnesses to your spirit, sometimes because your mind is unrenewed, because your mind is untransformed, you misinterpret what God is saying. You can misinterpret what God is saying if your mind is unrenewed. For example, God has witnessed to your spirit, write a book, write a book. If my mind has not been, has not been renewed, Probably God was saying, write a book on the calling on, on ministry. But because I've always loved fiction, my mind has not re been renewed enough to interpret the, the speakings of God, the leadings of God. I just, ah, I love, actually love fiction. So I write fiction. Even though you are writing books, you are not still in alignment with the will of God for your life. So this is why you must give yourself to transformation by the word of God. You take the word of God every day. You study, you read, you meditate. So that if God is giving instruction to your spirit, your mind will interpret it correctly. Glory to God. Let us see something. John chapter 12, verse 28 to 30. John chapter, chapter 12, verse 28 to 30. Let us see this together. I want, you to, I want you to understand this. John chapter 12, from verse 28 to 20. This was Jesus praying. He says, Father, glorify your name. Bible says, then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it. Did you hear it was a voice? A voice came from heaven. That was God speaking. God the Father speaking to Jesus. He says, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. See verse 29. I want you to see this with me. Verse 29. The Bible says, therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said it had thundered. Bible just said a voice spoke to Jesus, a loud voice. Clearly, God said, I have glorified it and I will also glorify it. Some people say, ha, thunder, it just thundered. Bible says, others said, an angel has spoken to him. That means God can be speaking and we are not discerning it correctly. It is possible that God is saying something, but you are misinterpreting his instruction. And that's why some people have run with a counsel that, like God said, but it was not actually God saying. Their desires, their minds, whatever, everything they want are mixed with instruction. So their interpretation of the speaking of God had led them into error. Glory to God. Do you get what I'm saying? Jesus prayed, Father, glorify your name. Bible says, a voice said, I have glorified it and I will yet glorify it. Bible says, oh, that's some people say, who were there? Who heard it? They heard the voice of God as thunder. Some people said, an angel has spoken. So that you will not misinterpret the leading or the, the, the speakings of God. Learn to immerse your heart, your mind in the word of God. Give yourself to total transformation by the word of God. Meditate on God's word. So that when God speaks, you know what it sounds like. So that when God speaks, your sensitivity is sharp. So that when God speaks, your discernment is strong. Have you seen people that say things like, 
I was dreaming, and then I saw someone naked, and said, ah, that actually means, they will not tell you, they are doing dream interpretation. Ah, you saw yourself naked in the dream. It means shame. What if God is saying, develop intimacy with me? Because nakedness also means intimacy. Before you can be intimate with someone, you have to see their nakedness. So if your mind is unrenewed, you, all you do is watch Hollywood. All you do is watch Nollywood. <laughs> that one is even worse. <laughs> Every time they want to hear God, there's always people in white saying, oh, son of man, son of man. They will first dance around. So people think that's the only way God will speak. I mean, if you don't watch Nollywood, you will not understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but some people will do, they will understand. Yeah. So if your mind is unrenewed, you box God in a way. When Pharaoh had a dream that he saw seven lean cows and seven fat cows, how do you interpret seven lean cows to be seven years of famine? How do you even interpret cows as years? <laughs> because anyone can give it any interpretation. That's why I don't believe in the ministry of uh, dreams. I'm an interpreter of dreams. For where as many as are led by the Spirit. Let me talk a little about the leading of the Spirit and dreams. Dreams exist in the realm of the soul. Dreams exist in the realm of the soul. I just told you, God does not exist in the realm of the soul. He's a spirit. So when he wants to speak, he speaks to your spirit. But there are times, because we are so dull of hearing, we've not trained our spirit. God can now use our dream as a tool to reach us. Let us see the book of Job 32. Job 32. Job, the book of Job 33, sorry, 15 to 17. Job 33, 15 to 17. Job 33, 15 to 17. He says, let us read from verse 13. From verse 13, sorry. He says, why do you contend with him? For he does not give an accounting of any of his words. Talking about God, verse 14. 14. He says, for God may speak. In one way or in another. Yet, man does not perceive it. God can be speaking through your inward witness. You did not get it. He used the scripture to talk to you. You did not get it. Now, see what he will now use. Verse 15. Verse says, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, when slumbering on their beds, what happens next? Then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Verse 17. In order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. So God will use every avenue he speaks. If you are not being trained, your spiritual senses have not been trained to understand the inward witness, to understand that God can speak through his word. The Bible says it will not appear in a dream through the vision of the night so that he can still communicate that instruction. But God does not only lead by dreams. And, and See, God can lead by dreams, but Satan can also lead by dreams. So you cannot trust on your dreams to be led by the Spirit. Bible did not say as many as are led by dreams. It said as many as are led by the Spirit. Your dreams must not take the place of the Holy Spirit. Because when you depend on dreams, you will stop trusting in the Lord. When you depend on dreams, you will stop trusting in the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. You will reduce the leading of the Spirit to just your dreams. And once the devil sees that, the devil sees it as an opportunity to take advantage of you. He says he believes in dreams. That's how we can get him. Show him something first and present it in a good way. Hey, people say things like, ha, I saw him in my dream. I was fetching water. I just I'm brought bucket. <laughs> as I knew, so I'm supposed to marry him. No. <laughs> and that's how you marry the devil in a sheep clothing. Because Bible says Satan can transform himself as an angel of light. You cannot depend on your dreams. You cannot. Dreams exist in the realm of the soul. The devil cannot ac access your spirit he can access your soul. Glory to God. Why do, you, why do people have nightmares? It's because the devil can access them through their souls. Their souls have been untransformed, unrenewed, exposed to junk. Have you noticed that there are times when you go to bed hungry, you see someone feeding you your dreams at night. <laughs> it's just sad. They just saved you, saved you burger. And then they had steak. Yeah. And you now wake up. You woke up. Jesus, I must go on 21 day fast. I have to purge my system of what I ate. It's just your mind messing with you. You were hungry. And then you if, see, you must have a greater consciousness. Such that even when you have bad dreams, you can take authority over it. 
Dreams, no dream has a finality until God puts a finality to it. And let me tell you, when you have bad dreams, don't empower it by speaking it. When you have bad dreams, the moment you utter it, you are giving that dreams the capacity, the empowerment to happen. See, when, even when you have, I'm saying it, you empower your dreams to happen the moment you talk about it. So if it is a bad dream, devil knows that he cannot make it happen in this physical realm. So he brings it to the realm of your soul. So that the moment you utter it, you're giving it permission to happen in the physical. You have, a, you have the capacity to take authority over anything happening in your dream. I remember when I was a, a baby in the faith. Oh, I didn't even know God. I used to have dreams of some, some demonic spirit pressing my neck. And I will not be able to shout. So, you want to shout Jesus, but you're just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as I grew spiritually, I realized that things no longer happen again. Because if you are weak spiritually, the devil can attack you in the realm of your soul. But as you grow spiritually, they, they can't even come near. The Bible says even if you eat anything deadly, it will by no means hurt you. So if they serve mistake in the dream, I say, where's the juice? <laughs> it has to be a complete meal. Well, you save me burger. Where's the fries? It has to be a complete meal. Even if you eat anything deadly, there is a, a higher consciousness ruling my mind that if I take anything deadly, it will by no means hurt me. Glory to God. Glory to God. The last thing I want to talk about. Ha, so many things to talk about. <laughs> it's not a topic you can just finish in a day. I don't know. The Lord leads my husband. Maybe he will continue next month. He says, um, I want to talk about how do we increase the sensitivity of our spirit to the Holy Spirit? How do we increase the sensitivity? I, we know how God leads us now. We know it's by the inward witness, primarily by the word of God, and then also by um, audible voices. Now, I'm going to talk about voice last. God can lead through audible voice, but he hardly leads you through an audible voice because the audible voice of the Holy Spirit can be very authoritative sometimes. All your life, the only time you will hear the audible voice of God might just be three times. Because primarily it leads you through your, your, the inward witness. But I'm still going to get to voices. Before that, how do we increase the sensitivity of our spirit? How do we train our spirit so much that we can discern the leadings of the spirit quicker? Number one, prompt obedience. Prompt obedience. Prompt obedience. See, God likes to train us as children to understand his leading. There's a training God takes us through. So there will be times God will tell you to do some, thank you baby girl. There will be times God will tell you to do some things that don't make sense. He may say, Yannick, on your way, preach to your Uber driver. Oh, on your way, don't, don't take this direction. Take that direction. But Google Map is telling you, take this direction. You just say, hey, let me see what will happen. And then you take the direction God said you should not take. And you got home safely and you're like, Actually, nothing happened. Maybe it was my head. It was not your head. It was the Holy Spirit training your spirit so that a day is going to come. You are going to need a heavy instruction that will be the difference between life and death. But because you've mastered how to hear God, even in minute situations, it will be very easy in that day. So people don't just die suddenly. God has been leading them all their lives, but they refuse to obey. Let's assume you want to go to church on Sunday. And you're at the time that I don't do laundry. You do laundry just once a month. And then I say, it's Thanksgiving Sunday. You only had one native. One native. You now realize that last month you wore that same native and you've not washed it. And it's at the bottom of your laundry basket. What do you do? All the clothes you've been wearing all month that you've dumped on it. You have to pick it out one after the other. One after the other. Also, when you've been living in repeated disobedience, the day God wants to give you a huge destruction, uh, a huge instruction that will affect your destiny, the, this repeated disobedience already clouds your perception. Do you get what I'm saying? So you will need to remove all the other dirty clothes before you can reach that native you are looking for. That is what disobedience to the leading of the spirit does to us. It clouds your perception. So I need that, that cloth for Thanksgiving, but it's at the bottom of the of the laundry basket. So you are, you are in need, desperately in need of the voice of the spirit or the leading of the spirit. But because you've been living repeatedly in disobedience, it's difficult to hear in those situations. That's how sometimes people say, I'm, I prayed about this, I'm not hearing God. I prayed about this, I'm not hearing God. Look at the patterns in your life. God has been leading you here and there. Give to this person. 
preach to this person. You know, um, go visit this person. Don't take this road. Take that road. Don't do this. Do that. But because some of those instructions don't have consequences, you just think, oh, I got away with that. Nothing's going to happen. To, you know, something was telling me to take this road. I thought maybe the road, there's a roadblock. But then I got there. Everything was good. Nothing happened. You just missed the training. It's like a child or a child that misses um, high school and then wants to go to college. You will need to go back to the classes you repeated. Graduate before you apply to college. Or can she start, can Sophia start from college? They will throw out. They, they, will, even, they will even read your application. <laughs> See God, I'm saying. So in the things of the spirit, God does not throw up. He leads up. It's step by step. There's a training you have to go through. Then secondly, how to train your spiritual senses to become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Meditating on God's word. Meditate on God's word. Meditate on God's word. I've, I've talked about it, so I will not talk about it again. Then number three, pray a lot in tongues. Pray a lot in tongues. How many of you, sometimes you, you have Google Map, right? If you put, oh, you're coming to Campus Christian Center, Google Map just gives you like an overview of where you're going. If you zoom in, it will show you all the traffic stops. If you zoom in, you can see the, the streets. You know, if the first time you press it, what happens? You just see the overview. You don't even know the names of the street. It will just tell you in 40 feet, turn left. 30, you get to Main Street. All the streets in between um, Mills Avenue and Tempe Marketplace. You will not see the name. But the more you zoom in, the more you see. So, so, the more you pray in the spirit, the clearer, the clearer the leading of the spirit becomes. The clearer the leading of the spirit becomes. Let me tell you, when it comes to the leading of the spirit, be careful of pressure. Be careful of people and be careful of performance. Anything that puts you under pressure, that God must speak, na, 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 na. Be careful of it. Oh, I've asked you out. I need you to give me an answer by tomorrow. Excuse me. How is this? He that believes will not make haste. Because if you are confused about the matter, the more you pray about it, the clearer it will get. So take your time. The more you, see, praying in tongues is like you zooming in. It gets clearer. It's like it just shows me Mills Avenue. But as I zoom in, I see that there is 34 South Mill Avenue. As I zoom in, I see um, AMC. As I zoom in, I see more clearly the, 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 the names of the streets in the location that I'm going. So, so praying in the Spirit makes the instruction of the Holy Spirit to be clear. So if there is a decision you need to make, spend time a lot praying. Don't assume. Your head can, your, your, your logic can stand in the way of the leading of the Spirit. The pressure people are putting you on that can stand in the ways of the Spirit. Everybody is doing it, can stand in the way of the leading of the Spirit. The pressure of performance can stand in the way of the leading of the Spirit. But the more you pray about it, if it is right, it will seem good to you and the Holy Spirit. If it is wrong, you will lose your peace over it. Hallelujah. How do we train our sensitivity to the Spirit, number one? Number two? Number three? Now, the things that can dull our perception, because that also ex exists. You've been hearing God before. Suddenly, it just seems like you're stuck. And I used to hear God before, but now I hardly hear him because every day God is speaking. Every day God is leading us. What are the things that can dull your perception? Number one, unforgiveness and unresolved offenses. <laughs> See, I cannot stay mad at my husband and feel good enough to pray. It's not possible. I cherish my relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's why if we have a disagreement, we have to resolve it immediately. Because it affects every other thing. It affects my relationship with God. So I cannot, offense is too costly for me. It is too costly. I will not be able to study God's word. I will not be able to pray. And if you separate those two things for my life, I'm, not, I'm, like, I'm literally empty. So when you hold on to things for too long, offenses, even when the Holy Spirit is speaking, they are like a clog in a pipe. The water is supposed to flow. But they have already clogged the pipe so the water cannot flow freely. So the Holy Spirit is speaking. But the own offense and the unforgiveness, they are standing in the way of you perceiving the instructions. Offense and unforgiveness. Number two, repeated disobedience can dull this perception. We just saw some people in John chapter 12 verse 28. The Bible says, I, Jesus prayed, Father glorify your name. Some people said it thundered. Some people said it was the voice of an angel. 
So, so that you're, you will not hear wrongly. <laughs> Avoid repeated disobedience. Every time you disobey, always ask for mercy. Because disobedience sears your conscience. And your conscience is the voice of your human spirit. You will hear Paul saying things like, uh, I, I, I speak the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience bearing me witness. Your conscience is the voice of your spirit. If you live in repeated disobedience, it will, it will sear your conscience. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, how to eliminate other voices in the leading of the spirit. Emmanuel, can I have 1 Corinthians 14 verse 10? 1 Corinthians 14 verse 10 in KJV. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 10, King James Version. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 10, KJV. Everyone look at this. It says, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Yannick, it is not Holy Spirit, it's not only Holy Spirit that speaks. Demon can also speak to you. Demons can speak. Your own desires can become the leading of the spirit. When people want something and they take it to God in prayer, their desire can stand in the way of them hearing God's, God's decision about that thing. So there are kind, different kinds of voices. Your own voice can stand in the way of the leading. Demonic voice, demons speak to people. Say, ha, they say, something was just telling me to take my life. God, it can, it can never be God. Demons can speak to people. If you are the type that likes audible voices, the devil is going to take advantage of that. That's why you should not, wait, I want to hear an audible voice. You know, people talk, talk about their encounters with God. I also want to see Jesus face to face. You, are, you may be asking for death because it's not everyone Jesus we grant an appearance of himself while they are walking this earth. So, if you are the type that is concerned, is there an audible voice, an audible voice, a demon will speak to you. So, the Bible says there are many kinds of voices in this world. But how do I separate the voice of the Holy Spirit from the other kinds of voices? Number one, the voice of the Spirit will always be consistent with the word of God. The leading of the Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit will be consistent with the word of God. This is why you have to be rooted in the Bible. You have to be rooted in the scriptures. You cannot just be a believer that is on the surface. Be planted. You are here like this, hearing God's word. You are training your spirit. Do you know how many scriptures I've quoted today? They have already been sown as a seed in your heart. The devil cannot tell you contrary to that. There are many voices. So, number one, the leading of the spirit will always be consistent with God's word. Number two, prayer can help you separate evil because when Jesus was going to cast out some demons, the Bible said they said, you are the son of God. Was it true? Was that, were they speaking under the influence of the spirit of truth? Something can be true, but proceeding from falsehood. That is true does not mean it's proceeding from the spirit of truth. There was a girl that was following Paul and Silas. He said, ah, and the Bible says she was under the influence of the spirit of divination. This man... They are servants of God. They have come to show us the way of salvation. And the Bible says for many days, she kept on saying it. He just got to a point. The Bible says Paul was vexed in the spirit. Ah, I don't have time. I would have taught you the motions of the spirit. There are times that your spirit can, there's a holy hunger that will get, that will get hold of your spirit. It is not, it's different from you having anger issue. Holy hunger is different from anger issue. Before you know, every time I'm hungry, it's, it's a holy hunger. Let us beat everybody here. Only anger is different from anger issue. Please. The Bible says Paul was vexed in the spirit. And he cast out that demon out of her. So how did Paul know that this girl is under the spirit of divination? When you pray a lot, the spirit of, the more you pray in the spirit, the stronger the leading of the spirit gets. Then number three, the leading of the spirit does not bring fear. <laughs> Bible says, for God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power. Of love and of son, my second Timothy 1 verse 7. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Bible says, for God has not given you the spirit of bondage again to fear. Fear has terror. God does not lead by fear. Anything that makes you afraid is not from God. Glory to God. I'm going to stop here. Let us rise to our feet. I can't cover the right time. Time is gone. We are we are people that honor our word, so we're gonna still stop here. Can you say, Lord, lead me into your perfect will for my life? Can you say, Lord, lead me into your perfect will for my life? I trust you with all of my heart. 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, lead me into your perfect will for my life. Lord, lead us into your perfect will for our lives. In the name of Jesus, let our spiritual senses become open. Let us hear your voice day in, day out. Let the leading of the Spirit become simple to us. When we understand, when we don't understand, give us the willpower to always obey you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help us. Help us. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Lord, our desire is that we grow in you. Our desire is that we attain a new dimension and a new horizon in you through your leading. I ask in the name of Jesus that you open our spiritual senses. That every spirit that has become dull of hearing, that Lord, tonight you will have mercy. And you cause the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened. That we will grow in the leading of the spirit. That we become we will understand better the, the things, your instructions, your teachings, your guidance in the name of Jesus. May we never be led astray. May we never be led into error. May we not be led into temptation. May we be led into the perfect will of God for our lives. Every day of our lives, Lord, give us the willpower to obey you. When we understand and when we don't understand, help us to follow you consistently. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.